Welcome to the Sexual Wellness Podcast, real life conversations with industry experts on modern sexuality and how to live a happy, healthy, turned on life. I'm your host, Laura Allen, founder of New Zealand's leading sexual wellness store and holistic sex, love and life coach, passionately guiding women to expand their pleasure in and outside the bedroom. Welcome back everyone to the Sexual Wellness Podcast. I am coming to you today with an episode about libido and I was inspired to bring this episode to you simply because I've been experiencing changes in my own inner sexuality realm and um, yeah, the seasons have been changing and it's brought up so much for me and it's been inquiring me to go deep and to really feel into what's going on and I feel like a lot of the time when we hear the word low libido or we tell ourselves that we have a low libido it can kind of come along with a little bit of assumption that there's actually something kind of wrong with us Um, when actually there are so many factors that can contribute to a like healthy happy thriving libido and I just wanted to go through what some of them are for you to help you understand better um, some of the some of these things that can influence how you feel in your pleasure and in your turn on and give you some tools to empower yourself uh, to feel more turned on in the everyday so Yeah, let's just dive straight in. Uh, The first point that I wanted to bring to you is relying on your partner for pleasure. This is such a big one because, you know, you're in a relationship. Now, this can also happen when you're not in a relationship, by the way. So when I say partner, it could be be a lover. It could be multiple lovers, uh, whatever kind of dynamic you are in relationship or in a casual sex relationship, it is still relevant for you if you are giving your pleasure to another person. So what happens when we do that, when we rely on other people to bring us pleasure? It is really disempowering and it's kind of very similar to that whole self-love ethos. When we rely on another person to make us feel good about ourselves, we can then start to lose the ability to actually fill our own cups and be able to provide that pleasure for not only ourselves but for other people as well. So this is the danger and it's really challenging to figure out the boundaries and the ways in which when you are in any type of relationship and find like find that fine line between I want to receive and share and be in this experience, pleasure experience with you, but I also want to be able to hold and maintain my own relationship to my pleasure and what that looks like is masturbation, self-pleasure and doing the things that really turn you on and light you up in and outside of the bedroom. When we go on dates or you know when we start sleeping with somebody, we and even in relationship we somehow kind of like default setting into oh it's my partner's responsibility to turn me on it's my lover's responsibility to turn me on blah 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 blah. when actually imagine what it would feel like to be so turned on and full of pleasure within yourself first and then going into your sexual experience with another person from that place of overflow instead of needing that person to provide you with it all of the time so that's just something to think about so um if you are if you are in a partner dynamic where you feel like the only sexual experience that you're getting is through um sex and intimacy with the other person then perhaps it's time to start asking yourself how can i bring more pleasure into my individual life and how can I start to reignite my sexuality with myself so that I am feeling truly turned on and lit up from an authentic space that I can therefore bring into my own life and into my relationship. Mm. 
So the next point I want to bring to you is the seasons of sexuality. So as women, we have monthly cycles. And even if you are taking uh, hormonal drugs, which actually that sounds really harsh to say it like that. (laughs) You're on hormonal drugs. Look, no, it's not like that. There is totally no judgment and nothing wrong or bad about being on um, contraception for the many, many reasons that that could be relevant and working for you. That is totally, totally awesome. Um, There are still ways that you can connect into a quote unquote monthly cycle, um, regardless of whether it's natural or not. So find a way to like tune into your cyclic womanly ways of being and so even within our monthly cycle we all have seasons within each phase of that cycle and they require a different expression of our sexuality within each phase and our needs change within each phase our um state of arousal changes within each phase throughout our cycle and so it's really important to be mindful of that where are you at in your cycle and how is that dictating dictating your sexual needs and requirements but furthermore than that we go through cycles in life you know and there are periods and there are times that we go through where sex and pleasure and sensuality is actually not at the forefront of our priorities and I you know it's um it's like I'm a holistic sex coach and of course I'm going to encourage you to prioritize your pleasure all the time but I also know and understand that a lot of the women who I speak to and a lot of people in my audience are you know women with jobs and children and pets and friendships and families and relationships and side hustles and all of these things that they're trying to incorporate into their lives and sometimes pleasure cannot always be the number one on our priority list and so it's actually really important to just give ourselves the love and compassion to allow ourselves the freedom to to say look I'm actually going to place my sexuality and my pleasure at priority number three or four at this stage and instead of completely shutting down to it I'm going to incorporate little things here and there that stoke the embers of my turn on so I'm not completely shutting the gate to it I'm maintaining my sexual fire I'm not saying no to it but I am acknowledging the fact that it's just not a super high priority priority for me at this stage and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm not going to make myself feel bad about it. And then you can look to the future and go, okay, this is a point where I feel like there's going to be a window of spaciousness, where I can reorganize my priorities, where I can go away on a sexy self-care weekend with myself or or with my lover and really start to make those promises and implement them into my life. With, that could look like having a daily self-pleasure practice again. That could look like starting a new yoni egg practice. That could look like doing breast massage uh, before you go to bed every night and you know little things like that that perhaps might feel like I just can't right now it's just not at the forefront of my brain and that's okay you know just like that is totally okay and then instead of letting that be your story forever start to think of ways that you will be able to at some point implement integratable practices into your life so that you can feel connected to your sexuality, to your pleasure, to your turn on and start to feel ignited again in a way that isn't overwhelming and detrimental to you and where you're at right now. So the next point is perhaps your heart is not online. And this is a really, really big one. If we are experiencing heartache, if we have gone through any kind of, um, any, I don't want to say trauma, but I mean, well, yeah, absolutely. Trauma is a big part of it. And, you know, when I say heartache, that could be personal, like in your love relationships, perhaps you've just broken up with somebody, but it's also completely relevant within your friendships, within your family, within your career. If you're experiencing a painful period, then that can 
that can actually um, make your heart space shut down. And why is this important for your turn on? Like, why do I talk about the heart so much? Because for women, our heart is our positive pole. That is how we penetrate the world. So that is our positive pole where we like to penetrate. That's why we have these protruding breasts, right? And I've said this before in previous podcasts. But, you know, without an open, receptive heart, we aren't able to give and share our love and our juice and our pleasure. And when our heart is not online... We actually dissociate and need to bypass our heart to access our genitals. And what that does is it creates a sexual experience that is actually very disconnected. And when you're not fully there, when your heart is not fully online while you're having sex, that's when it can start to feel surface level And actually quite painful because you're not coming from your heart. And if you're if you're hearing this and if you are resonating with this, then you know, don't don't worry about it because it's not it's it's an innocent thing to do. We all do it. And you know, we can even do it with our long-term partners or again, any dynamic. And it's so easy to just fall into a sexual experience because sometimes it's convenient or it's not that you don't want it. You don't have to be in a, in a push or force situation for this, for this experience to happen to you. It's almost like you fall into a convenience thing and you don't allow your heart and your body to really come online so that you can have a very um, meaningful sexual experience and connection. And so the more that we go down that path and the more that we're in this kind of, um, phase where we might be feeling heartache and distrust the more our hearts start to shut down and when our hearts shut down that's when we really disconnect from our pussy and from our pleasure and so if you are experiencing a time like if your if your heart feels sore you know like in your in your chest area if it feels tight and heavy and constricted then that is a sign that you've got some dearmoring to do around your heart space and around your chest area. And you can do that by practicing a beautiful breast massage. And you can do that in the morning, you can do that at lunchtime, in the cubicle, in the toilet cubicle on your work break. I mean, you can do this anytime. But by really massaging your breast and getting the knots out and the tension out, breathing so deeply, breathing in love, breathing in pleasure, breathing in openness, breathing in safety, breathing in trust into that space so that you can start to shed those layers of concrete that build up over our hearts over time naturally. It's just part of the human experience that we go through situations that cause our heart to solidify. And it's our job to continue to breathe into that space and to open it and open it and open it and keep opening to it so that we can show up every day as our most vital, vibrant, radiant, turned on, confident selves. And we can't do that when we are hunched over, literally hunched over. Mm. So one of the next points I wanted to bring to you is it's kind of a classic. It's the hormones. And so um, hormonal health is such a huge piece of uh, our libido. And if our hormones are out of whack, then that is going to have a direct impact on your sex drive. And so I highly recommend getting your hormones tested. There's a beautiful New Zealand company called Eve Health Co. And they are a part of Ben Warren's Be Pure ecosystem. And they have at-home hormonal test kits. And they're just so easy to use, so easy to interact with. It's such a beautiful company. And I would, yeah, I'd really encourage you to go down that path if you are feeling ready to finally take charge of your hormonal health. 
it really is my belief as a woman that, you know, all of these diet trends and fads and, you know, like fasting is great and all that kind of stuff and, you know, diet this, diet that, it's all cool and stuff. But really it's like, to me, the epitome of health is fertility and like humming happy hormones. For me as a woman, that is a true sign of vibrant, true health. So by really digging deep into where your hormones are at because it's one thing to get some probiotics and you know like do the guesswork which could take years and years and a ton of money of just like you know guessing what's going on when really if you just invest in the beginning and getting a proper test to figure out where you're at and what you might be needing then you're going to get better results that are far more direct and far more effective from the get-go so yeah hormonal health definitely something to run an inquiry on if you are feeling a little lackluster and it seems to be a sort of ongoing repetitive affair The final point that I wanted to bring to you is when you're feeling stagnant, stuck, blocked and disconnected. So it's almost the sensation of actually feeling like you are separate from your genitals and you feel so stuck and so blocked. And when it comes to actually touching yourself, it's like it's almost like you physically can't do it. There is something there is a almost very literal roadblock in the way for you and the first you know that's I mean like okay before I dive into this that stagnant stuck and blocked energy is something that will have a ripple on effect into every area of your life it's not just in your sex life if you're feeling blocked in your pleasure and in your sexuality it's a sign usually that you're blocking yourself somewhere else in your life so perhaps that's in communication with a certain partner perhaps that is um Perhaps it's in your career, you're wanting to make a career move. Perhaps you're, you're basically you're wanting to do something, but, you, but you're sort of not doing it. And you're, you're experiencing that blockage, not only in your lower chakras, but you're experiencing it in life as well. And so a really beautiful way to start to move and shift that stagnant energy, because in our root chakra, in our lower chakras, our base chakras, um, it's all about safety and once we start to work in those lower areas and providing ourselves with you know the strength and the ability and the capacity to really explode out into the world in the way that we know we truly want to that's when our sexual energy is unleashed and is when it can run freely through us and we're no longer feeling stuck and stagnant and numb in that area because it's a free-flowing river waterfall and I know that this might seem a little bit like what the fuck how and I totally understand but the thing is is that your pleasure and your turn on is a never ending wellspring it is eternal it never runs out and so usually there is something that is in the way of us accessing it and it normally doesn't take too much to be able to tap back into it and start helping it flow again this can be really deeply complex though so if you feel like this is resonating for you but you've kind of got no idea what it means or where you might be stuck and if you're looking for some you know guidance to help you get to the core of what that 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 block is for you then you can totally reach out to me I've got some spaces open at the moment for one-on-one coaching which would be really really awesome um but there are some other ways as well that you can tap into your pleasure So the first one I want to talk about is movement. Oh my gosh, if you've been following me, I have been doing so much in the movement space recently. 
Uh, there's Movement March that has taken off. And if you're in that, then fuck yeah, go you. You know how awesome it is. And if you're not in it, then damn, you have to sign up to the next one because it is honestly off the chain. It's beyond my wildest dreams of what I imagined it to be. It's just this container of epic women like really going for it and shifting some massive massive blocks and it is beautiful to witness such an honor to be a part of that space so movement march is all about dancing every single day and we're dancing through certain emotions certain structures and really breaking free of our own shit and letting ourselves be seen we're literally unleashing ourselves you know when you go to the club on a Saturday night and you've had a couple of bottles of wine and you are dancing like Beyonce like you feel like the fucking queen of the world and then you wake up on a Saturday morning with an outrageous hangover but you still feel really good because you got that release you know you got that really deep release and it felt fucking amazing you had so much fun and all of that kind of stuff now that experience is actually available to you every single day you don't need to be doing it at the club although that's great too but you know it's like that kind of freedom that unleashing that that wildness that ah that that pure release of joy and bliss and play and like confidence and total unhibited in and uninhibited inhibited and a why can't I think of the word right now in a inhibitionless <laughs> inhibitionless movement and it is that kind of movement that is really going to help you to shift what is in the way because it's when you can drop into those states that's when you can get some really clear downloads directly from the source of your body and from your wisdom and from you know god whatever you want to whatever kind of language you want to use there but it's when you can really start to get some good insight onto what it is that's going on and what you need to be doing to move forward also, just by moving in that way, you're like you're, you're shifting all of this emotion. Emotion is just energy in motion. And a lot of the times when we're feeling blocked and stuck in our sexuality and in life, it's because we've got these emotional blocks that are stored physically in our bodies somewhere. And by shaking, um, using breath, sound and movement and like doing some very vigorous dance, we can actually quite physically like move these blocks out and away and up and through our bodies, through our systems. I know that might sound a little bit woo woo to a lot of you, but the proof is in the pudding. Okay. And I know that this stuff works like purely from my personal experience and from the experience of hundreds of other women that I have spoken to and engaged and men, I'll have, you know, spoken with, worked with, engaged with over the years when I've been doing this work, it is powerful. So get into some kind of movement practice where you are practicing meditation and mindfulness and self-awareness to really get to the root of what those barricades are for you. Another another practice that you can use to start really shifting uh, some blocked energy down there is using a yoni egg. I haven't spoken about a yoni egg in a while on the show, but I still very deeply believe in the practice. Now, there's a difference between just wearing a yoni egg around during the day um, to actually having a practice that you do with your egg every single day or at least three to four times a week. Um, If you're just wearing your egg around passively around the house and at the office and everything, that's all great. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you could be training your muscles to be over tensed, causing you more numbness and um, actually more harm than it is good. What is really important to practice with the yoni egg practice is like yoni shavasana. And 
a huge part of doing any kind of pelvic floor exercise or any kind of pelvic floor weightlifting exercise, specifically with a yoni egg, is that you equally learn how to relax and go into a receptive state as well as learn muscle isolation, strengthening, strengthening, toning and flexibility. So for, for me, for my Yoni Egg course is within the Queendom course. It's in the fourth module and that's when we really start to go into different Yoni Egg practices and I've got videos and audio tools in there. So if you are interested in the future, just head on over to, to Queendom and uh, have a look at what's available in there and you can get on the wait list for the next one, which is going to be in about four months time. So yeah, uh, having a daily or very regular yoni egg practice is hugely beneficial to start to bring your awareness back into your pelvis and start to rebuild sensitivity in that area as well as start to feel more juiced up, pleasurable and turned on. Having a regular yoni egg practice is also going to enhance your orgasmic capabilities. It's going to de-armor your pussy. So again, it's going to help shift and move all of that stagnant energy that can get stored up in there. So if you've gone through a traumatic experience or if you have had a turbulent time in your relationship, regardless, you know, it's like we all have challenges in our relationships, a turbulent time at work, whatever. A lot of the time you can store that hurt and pain in your pussy and along with that solidification around your heart the tension is stored in your pussy and all of a sudden you're not experiencing the depth of sex that you were having say perhaps in the beginning because you've got all of this kind of baggage that you know in your head you know like yeah I'm over it now but actually in your body you're not so again like using a yoni egg practice to shift and move that energy practicing forgiveness and re-establishing a new relationship with your sexuality and your turn on right now is super super important and yeah another little final point just to add to that to start helping you move that shift and stagnant move and shift that stagnant energy is practicing um, breath and sound. So a big part of feeling stuck and stagnant is, you know, we're kind of we're kind of feeling like we're locked in a cage and we're just wanting to like break free, break free, break free, like be unleashed. But we sort of don't know quite how to get there and it feels uncomfortable and it feels weird and we're feeling into you know all of this like authenticity stuff like how do I want to move forward into this world and how do I want to like explode out as my most vibrant turned on and radiant self like how do I want to do that what does that mean what does that look like for me and we get so caught up in the head and we get so caught up in like conditioning from society and and like what we need to look like what we need to sound like what we need to blah 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 blah, blah like but if you're practicing breath and sound authentic breath and sound then that is going to drop you even deeper into your body and into your authentic self so let's focus on sound just for a second all of the time I'm, I mean I'll use it in a sexual experience but Authentic sound is not just for the bedroom, not just for self-pleasuring, it's for like a daily meditation, you know, just like when you're doing your deep breath in the morning and everything, it's like when you sigh out, don't just, you know, like, what do you really want to, what do you really want to say? How do you really want to sound? Because I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning sounding like feeling like I wanted to roar into my pillows like a wild boar lion fish I don't even know what but it did not sound like any kind of sound that I'd ever heard before it was actually really ugly and it was like fierce and it was kind of scary and you know what it was too much it was weird it was all that shit but it wasn't too much it wasn't weird it wasn't good it wasn't bad I didn't need to judge it it just was what it was and by allowing myself and giving full permission to express myself authentically 
authentically for what felt true for me in that moment is is exercising those authenticity muscles and that is unleashing that stagnant stuck energy that hasn't yet found a pathway or an avenue to be unleashed through yet so authentic sound when you're in the bedroom when you're making love you know of course there's all of these sounds like ah ah yeah ah, you know like that those porn sounds and like yeah those are great sometimes because you know sometimes that's actually just what feels right but so often that is not what sex sounds like sex sounds really like ugly like primal sex where you are like so fucking deep in it does not sound like that it sounds super it sounds weird you guys it sounds weird (laughs) from from like a conditioned societal perspective it sounds weird as fuck you know but this is the thing we're just conditioned to believe that it's weird or wrong or bad or too much quote unquote but Fuck that. Unleash yourself. Give yourself permission to be authentic in your sound. And it's the same with breath, like practicing really deep breaths, like tune into what your body needs in 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 an inhale. Where does your breath want to go in your body? You know, we think it goes just like into the belly and into the lungs and everything, but oh, there's tension over here. Like breathe it into your heart, like breathe it into your pussy, breathe it into your knee where it feels sore. You know, use your breath as a way to open and unravel the tension that is existing in your body. Use your breath to move stagnant energy. Use your breath to give you courage to go out there and do the things that you really want to do. Use your breath as a tool for power instead of a tool to keep you stuck and small in that shallow breath in in, in shallow breath dim <laughs> just made that up on the spot thought it sounded pretty good um yeah so there you have it guys i think that pretty much covers everything i did have one more point in here that i wanted to bring up and then sort of didn't because i was like oh i don't know if it's appropriate but i will just touch on it really deeply and really briefly and that is it, it's about being in a relationship dynamic that actually isn't safe for you so that is going to have a really direct impact on your libido and on your sex drive if you are in a relationship where you don't feel safe you don't feel seen you don't feel heard that is going to shut your pussy down. It's going to shut your heart down. So don't blame yourself if you are feeling like your sex drive is low. If you're not feeling happy and safe and expanded and just wildly free in your relationship, then that is going to that is going to translate into feeling contracted and small and stuck in your sexuality. So yeah, really run a self inquiry on whether your relationship dynamic currently is working for you and so on and so forth okay there you have it guys thanks again for listening and yeah i'm just so grateful for everyone who's in movement march and for everyone who is following my work and just being a constant support the sexual wellness podcast is coming up on one year so it's been an episode for a full year and a couple of weeks time and I'm super super excited I'll be starting again soon with interviews and the next interview series that I've got coming out is about what men want and I am interviewing some of the most delicious and amazing men from all around the world who work in men's work, conscious sexuality, dating, um, all of that kind of stuff and really bringing you some deep insight into, yeah, relating and what what men want and what men look for in women and how to really enhance our relationship with the opposite sex because you know what we are completely different and sometimes it's really hard to understand each other so it's going to be really really interesting and insightful and I cannot wait to bring this new season to you essentially Mm. and there's also one more thing I want to share and that is that do you boo my weekly dance event is starting up again and I am collaborating with a fucking epic babe. Her name's Claire Eli and she's traveled the world teaching yoga and movement. She 
teaches uh, dance at the Auckland Women's Prison. She's taught in New York. She's taught in London and a billion places in between. She's super, super epic and I'm so beyond thrilled to be collaborating with her. So every Tuesday night from 7.30 till 9pm starting next week, which is March the 11th, I think. Check that. Um, <laughs> starting from next week um, in Newmarket, which is an, a central Auckland location, we are going to be dancing and we're going to be guiding you through a really sassy booty and bass journey to like unleash your inner Beyonce. So come one, come all, all genders welcome. It's truly all levels for every single body on the planet so just yeah if you're feeling cold then come on down and let's get shaken Mm. thanks so much for listening guys and i'll be back with another episode soon if you enjoyed this episode hit like and subscribe or share it with someone who you feel could benefit from hearing it too my mission is to bring healthy sexuality to the mainstream so be sure to leave your five-star review on your favorite podcasting app because that way this content can land in the ears of those who need it the most if you're looking for more resources on how to live a turned on life check out my website at www.laura-allen.com where you'll find events coursework free downloadable workbooks as well as my coaching packages And lastly, I want to thank you for taking the time to prioritize yourself in this exquisite way. Because when we do, that's when we can really start to show up for the rest of the world. And until next time, thank you so much for listening. And I'll be back with another episode soon.